Welcome, bad movie fans, to another episode of Hollow Victories, the show where even Rob Schneider can win. I'm your host, Matt, joined as always by my hot co-host. Hello, it's me, Mackle Shadackle, uh, in an appropriate body. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we're talking about dear old Rob Schneider today, and he's, uh, he's having some, some out-of-body exp- Well, okay, one of them, he's still in his body, but his body is- altered the other one he's in someone else's body yeah or rather someone else is in his body I suppose that's how the, the the plot of the movie goes i suppose so he is in someone else's body but that's uh not really the the important part of the movie mm-hmm. it's the same thing though it's like it's jokes that can be made at the expense of rob schneider acting like someone else you know that's because even like in the hot chick, they don't really focus on who he switched bodies with. Like, uh, what was her name? Is it Rachel? Rachel McAdams. He, once she, once they swap bodies, she is barely in the movie because now it's Rob Schneider being just good. Also the way we, we'll, we'll get to it, but the way they did the body swap was really fucking weird. Uh, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> um, I suppose we will start with the animal. Would you like to introduce the animal? Sure, The Animal is a Rob Schneider slapstick comedy released in 2001, directed by Luke Greenfield, and the story was by Tom Brady, not to be mistaked with uh, the football player, um, who also, I believe, was he the director? Yeah, he was the director of The Hot Chick. Yeah, he, story he, of... he wrote The Animal, he wrote and directed The Hot Chick with Rob Schneider, I think. Does, does Rob Schneider have writing credits on both of these? Um, let's see. I'm actually not... Yes. Okay. Yeah, he, he does. He does. He does. So it was, it was the two of them yeah. uh, writing both these movies. Yeah, I mean, for the... Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and yeah, it's it's just about a guy who he's a... You know, he works for a police station, He but he doesn't actually do a lot of police work. He's just in the evidence room. He's disrespected by both people who visit the police station, like kids that are visiting for a field trip. He's disrespected by all of his co-workers. There's a character played by John C. McKinley, uh, known for his character, Dr. I think it's Dr. Cox on Scrubs. Um, who's just, uh, like a complete asshole to him, a huge piece of shit to him. Um, like, like that actor is in most of the stuff he is, to be honest. He's an, a he's an actor who plays assholes. But, uh, yeah, one day, though, he gets into a horrible car accident, and then a scientist, uh, who does a lot of experiments on animals, merge, like, fixes him up by merging him with a bunch of different animal parts, and then he starts to have the senses of really any, any animal that the movie wants him to have. There, It's not, like, a lot of these animal body swap movies where a human's acting like an animal, they'll pick a single animal... But this one will make him act like a cat, but then make him act like a dog who's angry to see a cat. Um, like, it's just any time they want to make any animal joke, they make the animal joke. And often that joke they want to make actually affects the story, like, it, in a weird way. <laughs> like, well, oh, you're about to get fired from your job? Oh, wait, no, you're going to turn into a dolphin and save a kid. So the joke is he's a dolphin, but now he still has his job because of that joke. To, to the extent that there is a story to this film. Yeah, I mean it's all over the place, but I would say it ha there's a, like there's a sequence of events, you know. Yes. Yeah. Um, and there's also a love interest to <sighs> They're throwing some really weird shit with her at the end of the movie, and they do wait until the end. <laughs> but um, but she she loves animals, she loves the environment, and yeah, I don't know. There's so much, like it's hard to explain the plot of this movie because it is all over the place. And there's like a whole other thing about there being like this beast that's going around at night and killing people, and people are starting to think it's Rob Schneider, and Rob Schneider's starting to think it might be him too. Yeah, there's just too much going. It's like too much and too little's going on at the same time because there isn't a lot of <laughs> substance to anything that's happening, and it all feels very repetitive. But it's still like kind of moving at a crazy pace. Like you, okay, like oh he. Like, there's one scene where he, like, shows that he's useful to the police because he's able to smell drugs that someone's hiding up their ass. So then he gets promoted, and you're like, okay, like, you think that this is kind of where the movie's going. He's going to be, like, more respected with the police. But then it starts to focus more on his partnership with the asshole cop, and people, do it seems like people don't really like him that much. <laughs> like, there's a scene where he goes to the mayor's house, and they all seem to dislike him, but I guess he wins them back over. It's like an, 
constant up and downhill battle for his character. I don't know. It just felt it felt like a mess, honestly. Yeah, no, you you hit the nail on the head. There is too much and too little going on in this movie. <laughs> so what are your thoughts on it, Matt? <laughs> uh, it wasn't, like, horrible. I mean, the all the jokes, I think, none of them are, like, particularly funny, but very few of them are, like, grown-worthy either. It's just like, haha, uh, Rob Schneider acted like an animal. That was the joke. I, I, I really did hate it. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I, and I, I kind of like. There's definitely worse comedies out there. There's honestly probably worse Rob Schneider comedies out there. For um, sure. But it's just, I don't know. I, I didn't like there. There. It's another. I, I feel like this happens with a lot of his and Sandler's movies too, where it's just like the lack of focus does start to bother me eventually where it's like, what? Okay. Like, can you at least give me something to focus on here? Can you at least like, it, it, I don't know. I, I, I thought that the pacing of the movie was really bad. I know it's just a comedy and really you're just supposed to sit back and enjoy the jokes. And I can do that as long as there's like an actual laugh to be had. I think I may have laughed twice in the movie and one of them one of them was just because of Norm Macdonald. I don't think his dialogue was funny. I just think Norm Macdonald is a funny... He has, like, a very funny tone when he speaks, yeah. and it's hard not to laugh at him. Yeah, I, I've noted this before. He was in a Christmas movie I reviewed, and I'm like, yeah, okay, uh, the it's lame, and he's kind of phoning it in, but even him phoning it in is better than anything else in this movie. Yeah, for sure. Two other things that I remember, actually, there's another one that I remember making me laugh. One is that it's just like this old man jogging at the beginning of the movie. And then, like, I don't know why this made me laugh, but like, it's just they like, reincorporate him at the end. And OK, that caught me off guard. That made me laugh. And then the other thing is after the car, like, falls off the cliff a bunch of a bunch of times. It's like I understood what, like, I think Chris even called it when we were watching because Chris was watching with us. Oh, it's going to keep falling. So, like, the car has, like, an extended fall, like, and, and, and then I was like, all right, there we go. And then a giant boulder lands on it. Like, I don't know. I, I just thought it was over. So that did catch me off guard and it did make me laugh. So the boulder made me laugh too. Oh, God. I laughed at something and I, I have forgotten what it was. Yeah, I remember. I think you even like, night. pointed out. You like gave it credit for it when it popped up. Oh, I know uh, what it uh, was. I, I know what it is. Okay, I think you uh, remember. Yeah, no, he... he He's left alone in the police station, and he's, like, playing around with a gun like he's a cop, and he's like, oh, what are you doing with that VCR? <laughs> oh, you bought it, huh? Let me see your receipt. Okay, my mistake. And it's like, his <laughs> fantasy was holding someone up by accident? <laughs> that was funny. That did make me laugh. Um, yeah. And a uh, predictable end to that scene, you're like, okay, this is the, the gun's going to be loaded and it's going to, like, shoot something. And yeah. indeed it was. That did happen. Oh, yeah. Mo a lot of these jokes you could see coming, and then the ones that you couldn't see coming were often just, like, <laughs> kind of groan-worthy. I mean, I know you're saying I know you're saying that it, like, doesn't have a lot of groan-worthy jokes. I thought the scene where he wanted to fuck the goat was really weird. <laughs> And I mean, like, it doesn't really surprise, it's not like, oh, I can't believe, like, they took it there, because, like, that's exactly what I expect from these early 2000s <laughs> movies. That's the exact kind of jokes that they liked. Just anything that seemed really wrong, or, oh, that's totally effed up, man. That's, like, what they're gonna do. But it's just, like, yeah, it's just gross. I don't, like, I don't wanna, <laughs> I don't wanna watch that. Yeah. No, uh, there are definitely some, some jokes that do not work at all. Um, I feel like we absolutely have to address, uh, Rob Schneider's black friend. Yeah. Who the entire movie is insistent that, like, he is being treated too well because of reverse racism. Yeah. And it's like, okay, obviously it's, like, supposed to be funny. It's kind of like what uh, Chris was watching with us last night and said it's just, like, someone's gonna look at that and take it seriously. Yeah, like, uh, it, it's clear, they're playing it as a joke, right? Yeah. I feel like they are playing it as a joke. They are not trying to say this is a thing. But someone is going to look at this and be like, oh, well, they they admitted it right here. Yeah. Even though the joke is pretty much any time he brings it up, he also brings up, like, some instance of severe, like, racism in the country's past. And it's like, oh, because... 
long-winded tangent. Now everyone's treating me nice. And it... Yeah. <laughs> it plays into the finale. It plays into the climax of the film. It's how they end it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, like, because the, the angry mob is coming after him, and then uh, his black friend steps in and is like, Oh, it was me. I, I I was the beast the whole time. And everyone's like, oh, yeah, I don't want to be part of a mob that kills a black guy. Yeah. <laughs> Come <Yeah>. on. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, and it, it, again, it's like one of those things where it's like, I'm, I, I'm not saying it can't be criticized because of this, because we are criticizing it. But it is one of those things where I'm just, I'm not surprised at all. Like, I, I that's ex- no. that's exactly the type of humor I expect from, like, an early 2000s, like, Rob Schneider slash Sandler movie. Like, that's, it's not just those two. There's plenty of, like, those are just the two we're, we're probably going to be thinking about the most this episode. But that's, yeah, that's early 2000s humor. That's, yeah, at least adult humor, I mean, you know. Something I brought up to you while we were watching these is, like, they don't really make studio comedies like these anymore there was a very specific era from like the late 90s to like the mid 2000s somewhere late 2000s i guess yeah they they made these studio comedies and uh, uh about five to one they were bad but every now and then you'd get that one and it's like you know i, I kind of miss this era you know uh-huh i you got a me, lot of shit but you got a few gems in there for me it just kind of feels like these feel like the equivalents of like a generic sitcom where it's not really there to tell a story or it's not really there to do anything cool from a filmmaking standpoint it's just there to be a way that like a popular comedian can make jokes Right. Um, it's like a different way of doing stand up almost. Um, and that's like that's what a lot of sitcoms feel like to me. And I never and I never enjoy those. The sitcoms I enjoy are the ones that do focus more on the characters and do focus on doing cooler stuff with the sets. Like community, great example of that. And then for like movies, like I don't know, like uh obviously Edgar Wright's comedies. Um but even something like Hot Rod, which I wouldn't say is like super well made in comparison to something like what Edgar Wright makes, those do do have movies like they at least they have stunts in them. They have um, there's like a there's these scenes where they have like all these giant crowds in them. They do some like weird effects. Like it may, to me, it's like Hot Rod is justified in being a movie where this like stuff like the hot chick and animal. It's like I don't know. It's it feels like you could get the same thing just from watching like a shitty stand up. I, I don't know. <laughs> it's like. There's nothing really to get out of the filmmaking. Yeah. I mean, I I would include Hot Rod in that era of, like, studio comedies. I think it's very much in the vein of stuff like The Animal. I I would agree. I just, like, that one makes me laugh, but I do think it has more justification in terms of, like... Absolutely. Having fun with the camera. It's a much better movie, but it is also, like, a comedy film that they gave to an SNL alum. So like, yeah, nah, fair enough. Um, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess, I mean, if you want to make the argument that it's possible, like that means it's possible for me to like a movie like this, then yeah, I guess it is possible to make me for me yeah. to like a movie like this. I no, just I don't think, like this one. I think there are plenty of movies in this era that I like, uh, you know, Talladega Nights, Wet Hot American Summer. Um, I enjoyed Billy Madison. It's been a long time. Um, I, it has been quite a while since I've seen it. Um, everybody likes Happy Gilmore. That's why that's Happy Madison. Like I think both of these were Happy Madison, weren't they? Mm-hmm. So what yeah, else is know, there? You know what's funny about Billy Madison? What my my neighbor was getting rid of some DVDs, and she's like, "Yeah, you can take whatever you want." And I, I took Billy Madison because I'm like, "Okay, I I've heard this is like one of like the good Sandler films," and I held on to it for years, like five years, and I never watched it. And finally one day I'm like. All right, I'm finally gonna watch Billy Madison, and I open the box, and the DVD's not in it. <laughs> I was holding onto an empty box all that time, <laughs> so I still, I still haven't seen it. I've never seen Billy Madison. Uh, I feel like I've heard that story before, but it's really funny. Yeah, just like I guess, I don't know, Animal, nothing in it for me. I, I, I talked about like you know, R- Rob Schneider is not an actor that especially makes me laugh, even when he's in a movie I don't hate, which isn't often. Yeah. Um. Normally, if he's in it, I don't like it. Got nothing against the guy. I mean, like, I'm not. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if he's done anything 
like outside of just making unfunny movies that like there's a reason to dislike him but from what i can tell it's just uh yeah he um, he made he made movies that some people found funny and i do not find funny at all pe- people kind of don't like him that much IRL because he's like vocally anti-vax uh okay so you didn't know that <laughs> but but uh, I, I don't know. That's like, I, it's stupid, but I don't think that is like the worst thing a celebrity has ever done. Of course not. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm i not going to make a big campaign against Rob Schneider because of that, but. <laughs> no. Um, I'm going to make a campaign against Rob Schneider because he's not funny. <laughs> um, but then, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm trying to think of, like, all the other people in it, too, because really, like, I don't think I like anyone in this. I, I, I know people like Dr. Cox on Scrubs. I know people enjoy him. I never was able to get into a sense of humor. I, I To me, it's just, like, douchebag humor, which sometimes, like, you can get the right person where I find it funny. Um, like, uh, like people who play asshole characters. I mentioned last night that, you know, love, like, love or hate the guy. I think Chevy Chase is good at playing an asshole. Yeah. I think he's funny in the National Lampoon movie, at, like, at least the first two. And I think he's great as Pierce. Um, but, I don't know, so, so many actors where it looks like their one thing is they're going to play the douchebag in a movie. It just doesn't it just doesn't work for me. The environmentalist girl, his love interest, um, apparently she was on Survivor, hmm. and this is one of three acting roles she has had. She was in this, she was on an episode of That 70s Show, and she was in a movie called Maybe It's Me. That is her entire acting career. Huh. Alright. That's, but that's, there, that's, I wonder how all those came to be. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. There are some names in here. We've already mentioned John C. McGinley. Also, uh, Norm MacDonald has a cameo. Yeah. Uh, R.I.P. Norm MacDonald. Also, R.I.P. Ed Asner is in the movie. Yeah. He's like the police chief. Famous for... uh, Well, Carl. He was Carl in Up. That's probably his biggest role. Mm. He was also Santa on in Elf. Yeah. Um, Bob from Zack and Cody was in it for a few seconds. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the ginger kid. Yeah. Um, Adam Sandler was in it briefly. A- Adam Sandler... <laughs> uh... Put a pin in it. Let's talk about Adam Sandler when we talk about the hot chick, because I think I have more to say about him and the hot chick. Okay. You got Louis Lombardi, who is in a lot of movies, but, like, I, I don't know who he plays in any of these movies. I'm looking at his IMDb, and it's like, oh, he was in Ed Wood, he was in Natural Born Killers, he was in Spider-Man 2, he was in The Usual Suspects, and I'm like, I don't, I don't remember who he played in all of these movies. Yeah, honestly, this was not a cast full of people I'm all that familiar with. Like, uh, obviously, Norm MacDonald, obviously, Adam Sandler. Edward Asner, actually, not until you pointed that out. But I did notice of it. I did notice after that. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess Rob Schneider, I guess, like, with our list of, like, actors who keep appearing in these, Rob Schneider, like, as a default, is on two of them now, and so is Adam Sandler. Well, yeah, I think, I think Rob Schneider has to go to the top. Rob Schneider is now the king because we have a whole episode dedicated is to Naomi, him. You know? Is Naomi Watson th- three or only two? Only two. Okay, because I would say three might be enough to put you at the top. But yeah, no, Rob Schneider, king of Hall of Victories. I, I would call him the king because he's the first actor we, we did an entire episode dedicated to. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe, maybe the equivalence of that is you have to have double the movies. So, like, since we did an episode dedicated to Rob Schneider, if someone appears in four of these as, like, a main character. Because I think we do have someone who appeared in these movies, like, three times, but it was a minor role every single time. Or was it only two? It's, like, the guy who does, like, animal noises. Uh, yeah. Um. Fucking. That, that was only twice. Okay. I have a list. I gotta open up my list and update it. Um, so yeah, uh, new, new King of Hollow Victories. Adam Sandler's definitely not in last place, even though he was only in two small parts. I think he had a more notable presence in these two movies than our other guy. Uh, D. Bradley Baker was the voice actor. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot more people I recognize in the, uh, in the hot chick. Um. Uh, yeah. The hot some of them for minor things and some of them for big things. Oh, and Louis Lumb... Barty is in that one too. 
Yeah. So, yeah, I guess he has to be added to our list as well. What else do we have to say about the hot ch- or about the animal? Um, Endin's kind of weird. <laughs> Where yeah. you find out the love interest yeah. was the beast. Yeah, the love interest is the beast, and then they just kind of, like, get together, and it's like, well, wait, but she killed someone. She killed at least two people. So, what? She killed two people, and then, like, then it's like, one year later, and she and Rob Schneider are married and raising kids, and it's like, uh, (laughs) are you sure about that? Yeah, it, it's it's weird, and I mean, it's like, you can, you can say it's, like, just supposed to be like, oh, it's just a fucked up movie, because, like, literally the way they got out of it was the, ra- like, was the race joke at the end, um, what we were talking about before, where they, yeah, like, they don't want to, like, he, he's, like, taking responsibility for it, I thought that was gonna be, like, a Spartacus moment, <laughs> but instead it was just bringing that joke back up, so you could say, like, okay, it's supposed to be, like, a really cynical and comedic ending, but it felt like they were trying to have a heart with these two in the movie, you know? Yeah. Like, it felt like you were supposed to, like, maybe be a little invested in that. I don't know. I think this movie and The Hot Chick both end on, like, a really, really uncomfortable joke. <laughs> this one ends with, uh, with, like, Rob Schneider's, um, his, uh, desire to have sex with a goat comes back. And then in the other one, it's, like, I mean, we'll talk about the animal sooner, soon enough. I, I don't think this is a, much of a spoiler, but it's, like... Basically, it's implied at the end of that movie that Rob Schneider is about to get raped. Yeah. And that's how the movie ends. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, jeepers. Anything else to say about the animal? Uh, no. Not a, not good. I agree that I, 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 Matt said this and I agree when we were watching, I agree. I thought both of these were going to be a lot more insufferable, but... Just because it wasn't as insufferable as I thought it could be doesn't mean there was a single thing I really liked about it. I don't think a couple of laughs is enough, honestly. Uh, So, yeah, one out of ten, I hated it. Yeah. Alright, fair enough. Moving on, then, to The Hot Chick, a film released only a year after The Animal uh, from the same writers, and it is now directed by uh, Tom Brady, not the football player. Um... In this movie, there is a magical pair of earrings from ancient Egypt that uh, if one person puts on one earring and one person puts on the other earring, they swap bodies, right? Yeah. Well, in the present day, there's these really bitchy high school girls, um, and one of them is looking for, like, earrings for prom, and she finds the magic earrings, and she kind of steals them she like swaps them around with like some earrings that yeah. are because fr- because the the That's store stealing. owner the <laughs> store owner set basically says hey those aren't for sale and it's like then why are they on the floor but also it's okay fine <laughs> <laughs> so she she swaps them out with earrings that are for sale and walks out with them but as it happens she loses one at a gas station which rob schneider is robbing he sees the, the earring on the ground and takes it home with them, uh, puts it on for some reason, as does the girl. She puts hers on for some reason. Uh, Jessica. Jessica is her name. Yeah. She puts the earring on. Rob Schneider puts the earring on. And they swap bodies. And now Jessica is stuck in Rob Schneider's body for like a, a week almost. Maybe a little more than a week even. And she she just has to deal with the struggles of being trapped in Rob Schneider's body uh, while not knowing what has happened to her body. And we barely see uh, the Rob Schneider character after the opening. She, she appears like... You see her right after she wakes up transformed. You see her stealing Tampax... Haha, period joke, and then she doesn't come back till the very end. Yeah. She appears, like, on the news because she's breaking, she's assaulting people, she's committing crimes, but... Yes. Yeah, and also the way that they do the body switch in this movie is really weird, because Rachel McAdams, you know, as the bratty teenager, goes to bed, and then she wakes up in her own bed as Rob Schneider, so it's not like their minds switched, their bodies morph into each other. 
yeah. that's not normally how I see it. Like, I mean, I guess it's already, like, b- body switch, and I'm not saying that there's a certain, like, list of rules that you have to follow to make it, but it's just, it's it's a weird approach. I think the only reason they did that is they wanted a funny scene with uh, Rob Schneider trying to get out of the parents' house. Um, I feel like they could have just, well, I don't know, that was weird. That is kind of how, they, they set it up that way, at least. That That is the rule from the beginning of the movie, is, like, you yeah. put the earrings on, your body morphs. Yeah. Um, uh, just, I guess, I mean, I guess then, like, then there's not really anything inherently wrong with that as long as you're following your own rules, but it's just, I don't know, it's just not the way I normally see it done. I mean, maybe that, maybe that could even be a compliment, but I don't think so. <laughs> so, this movie goes a lot of really odd places, a lot of play, and, and it kind of cops out on a lot of the stuff it brings up, and it's yeah. like... My dude, you brought this up. No one was expecting this. This is not something you ever had to address. You you could have just let it be. <laughs> you could have just not brought this up and then you wouldn't have to come up with a cop out. Yeah. Um yeah, it was weird. Um I mean, the movie's almost like odd, like it almost seems like oddly progressive at certain points and then yeah it just kind of backs out most of the time and it's also being progressive yeah. while making, like while making jokes about it so like uh we we were addressing some of like the period accurate homophobia but at the same time it's also period accurate progressive mm-hmm. right like yeah. this this was sort of the progressive ideal at the time yeah. A, a, a lot of this stuff, even while they're making jokes about it. Yeah. Even while it's like, haha, the, the joke is, it looks like Rob Schneider's gay. Yeah, I mean, the little brother's, like, dressing up, too, and I think that, like, it's kind of like, I think that the sister's supporting it. <laughs> but it's kind of going, it kind of goes back and forth. Well, she, she seems upset that he is use or that she seems upset that he's using her clothes. Yeah. That, that seems to be the problem. It's not yeah. that he's dressing up, it's just... Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. I mean, take take what you will out of that. Yeah, it's a movie that was released in 2002. It's not going to be perfect covering these things. But, I mean, I definitely think for the time it probably was doing a fine job of all that fun stuff. Uh, yeah. Um, but, yeah. I, what were we talking about? I'm sorry. Before uh... that. Well, I was kind of talking about the weird places this movie goes, and I, I suppose yeah. I should give the obvious example, the, the the real elephant in the room. There's this weird subplot where Jessica's friend, played by Anna Faris, is slowly developing a crush on her. Yeah. In, in the Rob Schneider body, and it's sort of like... Okay, hold on. Is she is she, uh, are they trying to imply she has feelings for Jessica or is she into Rob Schneider? <laughs> I think the ending and like the ending kind of confirms she's into Rob Schneider. Yeah. But uh, at the same time <laughs> like it's such a weird direction for that to go. It's like like they're going like halfway to making a lesbian romance and then and then they don't. Another thing too, though, is even though I say it kind of ends because she's it kind of ends with her like smiling at Rob Schneider when he's back in his normal body, but it's like it does like although there is like a lot of heart put into her and Jessica's like conversations, like it isn't just like a joke, you know. There's like some really, you know, like you know emotional scenes between the two. Absolutely. Um. So it's like it, it's like hard to just say all of that is oh she's attracted to Rob Schneider. There's definitely some sort of attraction to her friend's personality, right? Um, but it's like, it, it is kind of, I don't know, it's like, they're trying to do that, but they're not quite, like, landing, like, nailing the landing, or sticking the landing, or however you say that. Yeah. It is, I, I agree with you that it's interesting. I didn't expect them to take it that direction. I think it could have been ended a little bit better, because instead she ends up with uh, Billy, who I don't think is a very well-written character at all. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Billy's whole thing is he's friends with an asshole, so we're supposed to like him because he's genuine, not like his asshole friend. Played by Vaughn from Community. Yeah, it's it's Vaughn. It's uh, Eric Christian Olsen. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and he's he's like a dick, and uh, you know he's he's dating uh, Anna Faris's character, but he's like cheating on her and stuff. 
Yeah. Um, where where Billy's like, oh, I know, I actually love my girlfriend, but that, that's like one scene and then we don't really know anything else about him. Yeah. Um, I do think, I think Jessica has decent enough character development in this movie. Mm-hmm. Like, I... I Perhaps more than would be expected. I agree, honestly. Like I don't think the character development on her is that bad. I think what's weird about it, though, is in the opening scene, when you're the, all four of them are being insufferable. Like, throughout the movie, it's like later implied, oh, Jessica's really the only bad one of this group. It's just the others kind of her. But, like, no, the other three friends are also being assholes in that opening scene. And then the second she turns into Rob Schneider, it's, you're just supposed to forget that completely. Yeah. Um... So I don't know. That was kind of weird. I, like the friends needed to change too. They they are <laughs> they are <laughs> yes. not innocent. Yeah, but... Jessica's the leader. You can say, oh, they're just like they're just victims of this because they're trying. They're they're just like dragged into it by Jessica. But they're you know they're laughing. They're having a good time. They're doing stuff like she's not the only one. She's not tell. They do stuff that she doesn't ask them to do. You know. Yeah. It's they're they're like I don't know. So that but like. Yeah, I think, like, Anna Ferris and Jessica, like, April's the character's name. Jessica and April, I do think, become more likable as the movie goes on. And that's that's nice to see. Like, I'm glad they weren't... Because they were so fucking insufferable in those first, like, 20 minutes. I'm so glad that they toned that down. Yeah, no, I joked with you that uh, they made a movie where Rob Schneider is not the most insufferable character. You, we also, you also made the joke that the pun, their punishment, for, or maybe, I don't remember who said this, uh, <laughs> their punishment for being this bad was to turn into Rob Schneider. <laughs> yes. And that made them a better a, person. <laughs> the, so, so, I said of this movie, th- this movie weirdly feels like, like a really, really edgy Disney Channel movie. Mm-hmm. Like, there's stuff in this movie Disney Channel would not do, but story-wise, plot-wise, it feels like the story was written, this was, like, pitched as a Disney Channel original movie, and then Disney Channel didn't want it, so Rob Schneider's like, oh, I'll do it. Just put more dick jokes in. Yeah, I think the only thing Disney Channel wouldn't have done was the racist jokes and the dick jokes. Although the dick jokes, they might do a more... Like, P, like they might do, like, a more w- toned-down version of that, because there were old Disney movies that definitely acknowledged sex, you know? <laughs> I think that there were Disney Channel movies. Like, again, these are the older ones, not the more modern ones, but I think there were Disney Channel movies that acknowledged it. Um, so, yeah, I think that the extent of the dick jokes and the racist jokes, are would, like, I think if you cut those... Then yeah, this could be a Disney Channel movie. I I absolutely believe that they would do like a body swap movie like that. They probably yeah. have. They probably have well, done something like this. Uh, oh, almost certainly, almost certainly. But I mean, even apart from like the body swap aspect, uh, you have characters like uh, Ling Ling. Yeah, is that her name. Uh, it's, her thing, her joke, her one defining character trait that is in every scene she's in is that she pretends to be black around the black kids and then her a her her korean mother shows up and embarrasses her no matter what the situation no matter where they are her her korean mother shows up and embarrasses her even in places she shouldn't be they're at prom and her mom shows up and it's like (laughs) what are you doing here (laughs) But then, and then at the end, she, like, learns to embrace her Korean heritage, and it's, like, it's the shallowest shit ever, but also it's, like, I feel like I have seen this in a Disney Channel movie. I feel like this Probably. was in Lemonade Mouth, wasn't it? Um, <laughs> There was I, something I, similar I, in Lemonade kind of, Mouth. Kind of, kind of, because, like, one of them has, like, a Muslim father. Yeah. And, although the, I think the dad is painted more as the bad guy in that one. Yeah, this is... It's this one note joke character that suddenly has a change of heart at the end of the movie. Yeah. It feels very Disney Channel in that respect. It's got two Disney Channel actors in it. It's the sister oh, yeah. sister twins. They they're <laughs> in it. And Tamara. Yeah. Was that sister sister I know there was also Twitches, but was sister sister was them, right? I believe so, yeah. Yeah. Let's sister, talk about sister. the cast a little bit more. Um You uh, have uh We mentioned Anna Ferris. Who actually, I think, is, like, pretty, like, I mean, like, it's, she's good in this for what it is. 
Yeah. Like, um, I think Anna Faris is a good actress. Uh, yeah, she's she's a good actress. I mean, she is still in the hot chick. You have yeah. to remember that, but yeah, she's fine. She's in pl- I'm sure she's in plenty of shit, to be honest. But but uh, sure, but yeah, she's sure. also proven that she can do good stuff too. I mean, she's in the Emoji movie. Yeah, <laughs> Rachel McAdams. I what what else is she in? I know I, I know obviously I know who she is, but it's just like uh, it's never like anything that would be appealing to me. Like yeah, Mean Girls. That's that's who she is. She She's going to be in the new girl. Doctor Strange. And she, honestly, honestly, her character in Mean Girls is kind of her character in this movie. It's it's the <laughs> same fucking character. She was in uh, Wedding Crashers, The Notebook, Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. yeah, these are all stuff that don't I don't really watch. Midnight in Paris, I do like Midnight in Paris. Um, yeah. In spite of the director. <laughs> um <laughs> Yeah, I mean, definitely some well-known movies. I don't have a strong opinion on Rachel McAdams. I find her very annoying in this movie. That, but that's because she's playing the character at the most unbearable, like the their most unbearable moment. So yeah, I don't know if I can blame that on her entirely. I, Rob Schneider was honestly not like that bad in this. In a lot of it, yeah, he was not insufferable to listen to. He's like becoming a like it said. It's a kind of he gets to be the character that's like becoming a better person as it goes on yeah he just kind of seems like a, you know more flamboyant best friend type of character at a point so a- adam sandler is in this movie yes he plays an attendant at the uh, shop they get the earrings from and he's playing a character rob schneider originated on snl like the skit is like you know people come into this shop and they're, they're asking about stuff and he's like Oh yeah, there's a good place to hide your weed in here, man. And it's a joke that works so much better as a skit on SNL. Yeah. And not a character in this movie. That was like a wink to the audience almost. Just like, hey, remember this? Yeah, but it's 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 not as funny. It doesn't work as well as it did on SNL. Yeah. But uh as you pointed out, in both of these movies, Sandler plays roles Rob Schneider originated. See, he plays the, oh, you can hide your weed in here guy from SNL. In The Animal, he plays uh, the, you can do it guy that Rob yeah. Schneider plays in, like, everything. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's weird. It's weird. Sandler was not especially enjoyable in either of these, but he also was not in a lot of it. Yeah, he was barely in either of these. And... Uh, I, I'll be honest, I almost wonder if, like, Adam Sandler was holding Rob Schneider back a little, because I think he's so obnoxious in so many Sandler movies, but when you put him front and center, I liked him a lot more in these two films than I did most things he is in. Oh, for sure, for sure, and even if it's, like, a somewhat, like, tolerable Sandler movie, he's still playing a horrible part of it. Like, I think Fifty yeah. First Dates is fine. I don't think it's a wonderful movie, but it has, like, a charming enough relationship, an interest in enough idea, some okay jokes are mixed in there, for sure, and then Rob Schneider's character is awful. Yeah, and th- that's the thing. You and I both agreed. Both of these movies were less insufferable than we thought they'd be. And I think it's kind of because we we have this expectation of who Rob Schneider is and who he plays. Mm-hmm. But, like, these movies, he's the main character. So he has to be a little bit likable. Yeah. So I, I think he is much better as a as the main character than as some obnoxious side character. That is not to say he's good as the main character, just he is better as a main character than he is any of his obnoxious side characters. Yeah, um, for sure. Something I, a little bit of a different topic, but something I want to give this movie credit for over The Animal 2 is just that, one, I laughed more times, Not that ma- still not that many times, really, I don't like this movie either, it's just kind of like, oh, it's not as bad as it could have been. Um, but, uh... The story, like I said in, like, The Animal, that one's is so over the place that it actually makes me like it less. Like, it's just kind of annoying to watch it. This one was longer, but I felt like it generally stayed focused. I mean, there's still a lot going on in it, for sure. Yeah, um, there's, but, they definitely do all of the jokes you expect them to. But they do kind of keep the focus on, like, just Jessica trying to talk to family members and friends through a different body, you know? 
Yes. So like, so like when she starts to work, I remember like when I was like, oh, why is she, she's going to start working for the dad? Okay. This is a weird thing to just randomly start throwing in. But then I was like, oh, okay. They want to have scenes where she's like engaging with her parents and her little brother too, but like in this different body and they don't know it's her. And he's learning things about his fam, like about the current state of, of her family through them because they don't know that they're talking to her. And it's like kind of this, and then like the friends, you know, like you get to really the only one that she has that much chemistry with is April. Yeah. Anna Ferris's character. Like the other well, two, you basically forget about. Yeah. She does. She does take some time to like apologize to other students that she has been mean to. Yeah. I do feel like the stuff with the family was maybe a little underdeveloped. Yeah. Like I, I almost would have preferred if they had just cut a lot of that. Because it like it's like okay, uh, like like there was not really that much setup for it, and there's very little payoff for it. It's mm-hmm. like I I feel like this is an unnecessary part of her character arc. Mm-hmm. You're just trying to shoehorn an extra thing in here. It's like it's not good, but it does fit with the rest of the movie is trying to be, which is she becomes yeah. a better person through this pers- other person's body. Yeah, and I mean, generally, that is how body swap movies go. Yeah, and like, I know that sounds like, again, like, I don't want to give the movie a ton of praise for that. I don't think it's a very good movie. I think it's very generic, but I think the problem with the animal is that it doesn't know what it wants to do. (laughs) Well, the animal wants to tell all the jokes, and there's no, like, plot, really. Mm -hmm. The plot is secondary, whatever series of events happens it's all contingent on making jokes this film has a plot yeah for sure it takes time to tell the jokes you expect it to tell Mm -hmm. but i think at the end of it it's uh it does tell a story at least yeah like okay let's put it this way both of these movies put a bunch of like shit on the table a bunch of tiny pieces on the table and the animal just decided that was enough while the hot chick tried to put it together. Like, it tried to, like, connect these jokes and these ideas with a story. It doesn't do a great job, but it did make an attempt where the animal just didn't try to connect the pieces at all. <laughs> it was just like, okay, it'll be funny if this happens in this scene, it'll be funny if this happens in this scene, it doesn't matter how each scene goes into the next. Yeah, absolutely. I think we, we, sh- we do, we should bring up the ending. Uh, you kind of alluded to it earlier, but yeah. there's there's this gag that the, these characters are all at a bar, and every time Rob Schneider is saying something that sounds really gay, this bartender just happens to be standing right next to him and, like, kind of gives him a, a stink eye. But then, uh, you know, at the end, the the criminal Rob Schneider was playing is back in his normal body, and he he runs into, um, he, he, he just, like, runs and hops in some random car, and the bartender happens to be in it, and he just, like, turns to Rob Schneider and smiles. And that's the end of the movie. Yeah, it's not... It, it, it's probably the thing that has aged the, like, worst. Yeah. In this well, movie. Yeah. It, it, yeah. With comp with competition from other things too, but I think this is that's probably like the worst part of it. Yeah. Although uh, I also want to mention at the ending, uh, cause cause the criminal has been working at a strip club with Jessica's body. Yeah. And <laughs> then uh, like he transforms back into Rob Schneider in front of all these people. Yeah. Everyone sees him do it. <laughs> and no one says any no one is weirded out by this it's like that woman just transformed into a man like right in front of everyone why are you not concerned about this how, how is no one having a reaction to this yeah and, and I, I, another thing i love about that ending that's just like thrown in so fucking quickly is like um, Rachel McAdams, like, when Rob Schneider is in her body, like, he's doing illegal things as her. She's showing up on the news because of it. Um, so, you're, oh, like, oh, this is a big conflict. But, again, they're not really focusing on her too much, so that's just kind of a thing that's happened in the background. And then at the end, 
when she's back in her own body, it's like, okay, is that going to be a problem? But then after she's like kissing the boyfriend, like the guy um, who she assaults is just like, I'm not pressing. Char-. It just cuts to him. It's like, I'm not pressing charges. And then it's like, okay, why did you set it up? <laughs> why did you set it up? Like they weren't even concerned about it. The characters weren't even like saying, oh no, they're going to think I'm a criminal. Like that didn't happen at all. Why did you set that up? If you weren't going to do anything with it. There's even uh, a joke I thought was, decently funny but then like it it never comes back or connects to anything like uh one of the girls like leaves a a message on like april's answering machine and he's she's like hey i think i found jessica's body it's right outside a strip club we gotta go i think the police are gonna find her it's like like sounds so much like they have murdered jessica yeah but then that never comes back like no one well, yeah the mom just gets freaked out about it but then in the next scene she's worried about something else yeah it it never comes back and it's like man that that could have been the setup for something good and it, it just yeah. wasn't and then speaking of which that mother character is really bad because like like the like she'll hear like her daughter laughing and then a man scream and she's just like oh my god she's going through puberty it's like i get that's supposed to be funny but it's just like you hear of like throughout the entire movie she like rob schneider keeps going to their house hanging out with their i'm gonna assume minor daughter since she's in high school (laughs) and the entire time would like every single time they hear a man screaming up in her room it's just like oh no like they don't even like bother to go check on her you know I might be overthinking it, because I know it's just a silly comedy, but still. The yeah, I don't know. I horrible. feel like he makes enough noise that the his their their the girl's parents should be concerned yeah. that there is a man in their daughter's room. Yeah. Like the how how does that not cause any issues throughout the entirety of this movie? <laughs> You could do like and it like like to plus you could do comedy with that if you want like don't just like say like oh it doesn't make sense from a logical standpoint I know a lot of camp comedies don't care about the log- logistics but it's just like okay at least do something funny with it then he has to find a way to hide or something I don't know man I, saying it out loud that doesn't even sound that sounds like it'd be another thing to drag the movie on but yeah I don't know. yeah maybe we should be grateful that they barely <laughs> elaborate on some of these things yeah. <laughs> But it's just like, uh, I don't know. I I guess that's all all I got. Anything else you want to talk about with the hot chick? Uh, no, not really. I, I think I said all there is that needs to be said. All right. I guess, uh, you, you got the first vote here, but I think I kind of know which direction this is going. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 sometimes I try to make it obvious, like, I try not to make it obvious which one I'm going to vote for, but I feel like in this episode it was just inevitable. Yeah. Like, I, I, I clearly lean towards one more than the other. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think the hot chick is much better than... And okay, mm, not much better. It's better. Um, and I and only because the animal I genuinely think is unbearable, this one is it's something I don't like. I never want to watch it again. Uh, but it's probably like a two, a 2 or 3 out of 10 instead of a 1 out of 10. I, I don't think the animal is completely insufferable the way you do. I was mostly just bored by it. Mm. But, uh, yeah, the hot chick is the better of these two movies. It's got more of a pl- plot. It's got more heart. It's not good by any means. It does all the jokes you expect it to. But of the two, it, it is certainly the better film. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we're we're going against the crowd again. It's another Marmaduke. Although Marmaduke. <laughs> This it is fifty two percent the animal, forty eight percent the hot chick. That is Literally close. seems like the difference between one vote because this got twenty seven votes, which I I went back and looked. That is the fewest votes we have ever gotten on one of these polls because yeah, everyone's the... just like, no, no, neither of these movies are better. <laughs> it's yeah, like... it's also just like Rob Schneider. Like, so I feel like when you bring up stuff like comic book movies or like uh you know a movie about like a well-known musician a lot more people are going to be opinionated on those than a fucking rob schneider comedy yeah especially two rob schneider comedies (laughs) um i believe this is the closest one as well like no probably we've, we've never gotten a vote this close uh now serenity versus book of henry was 60 40 yeah so i yeah this is the closest one 52 to 48 
bringing in some controversy. So Ooh, we, 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 went, we went against the crowd, but only barely. Most of the crowd does not have an opinion. <laughs> ha! We beat you guys. Fuck you. Our votes are more important than yours. <laughs> if, you, if you disagree, start your own podcast. Yeah, and then it, like watch it take off, and then people accuse us <laughs> of ripping them off. <laughs> it it like every month they release the episode we released the previous month, <laughs> or they just like they check your vote, like your your toll, and they get to it before we do. <laughs> so they release it like a week before we do. Oh. We're giving we're giving people like. There could be an evil person out there watching this who is going to take us up on this. Like, we're encouraging <laughs> evil acts right now. Eh. Evil deeds. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. If they're that dedicated, right? The hot chick wins! Woo! Yeah. Uh, alright. So, as of right now, next episode is going to be the first episode done entirely in person entirely live action episode so uh you know we, we watched a movie called the hot chick let's watch you know some movies about hot chicks it's two 90s disasters just at two of the lowest reviewed movies ever uh both about strippers it's 1994's strip tease versus 1995's showgirls Ooh, I've heard of Showgirls. Strip tease, I'm not so sure about. I think I know which one of these is going to win, but it still seems like a pretty good pair up. Hmm. All right. That'll be interesting to see. It's on uh, Amazon for rent. Let me make sure. Stri okay, I'm sorry. Strip tease was 96. My bad. Yeah. But whichever way. All right. Um, Michael, anything else to add? Uh, not really. Uh, I, I normally I make some sort of comment about what we're gonna watch next, but uh, I, yeah, I don't. I got nothing for this one. I'm actually not. Uh, Showgirls. I think that I re I remember hearing a lot about it because of like sardonic cast and whatnot. But uh, yeah, it's just, Showgirls is a pretty infamous film. Uh, Striptease also. It, it was more infamous in its time. I think. I think with time, Showgirls has continued to be the favorite. Where. Uh, striptease has faded a little, but in its time, everyone was giving striptease shit, so. Mm -hmm. Oh, and both of these have a, someone named Rena Riffle in it, so she's gonna be added to that list. Or Renee Riffle. Alright, um, anything else? I That's guess all. I already asked you that. <laughs> uh, alright, uh, in that case, for my co-host Movie Mackle, I'm Matt Presents. Um, see you in the next one. Peace. They've got Fred Figglehorn's mom in this. The, uh, the animal wins. Or no, uh, the hot chick wins. <laughs>